Hello, my name is Jacqueline Pollock, and this is the third video in my uh, mini series about harp moving. Uh, today's topic is loading and unloading a harp in a vehicle. And understandably, uh, many people have questions about this. It's a, a large area, and certainly there is a, um, can be some cause for concern about loading and unloading a harp in a car. So as you can see, I have three harps, um, all in their covers, uh, ready to use as examples. Uh, this is a Heartland Lyra, and then a Lion and Healy Troubadour, and then uh, my full-size pedal harp, a Lion and, he Lion and Healy uh, Style 30. And um, I'm going to use my minivan as an example for the vehicle. Uh, I'm going to be filming all of this in my garage, which I've never done before, so hopefully this goes smoothly. One area I wanted to discuss before actually uh, demonstrating some of the different ways to load and unload harps is uh, the temperature of the vehicle. And this is a pretty large area. Um, a basic rule of thumb is that if you would be uncomfortable with the temperature, then your harp definitely would be uncomfortable with the temperature. So it's a great idea in the winter to go ahead and warm up your car before putting the harp in. And then of course in the summer to do the opposite and cool your car down before uh, loading your harp. Um, another uh, area kind of in the same uh, line of thinking is uh, sometimes people ask me about making a stop with their harp in their car. You know, perhaps you're on your way somewhere and uh, you need to stop off and run a quick errand. Um, so it's the same basic rule. Uh, if you would be uncomfortable uh, staying in the car for that length of time with whatever the temperature is, then your harp also <laughs> will be uncomfortable and that's not a great idea. So sometimes uh, in extreme weather, uh, that means that you cannot always be as efficient as you would like. <laughs> there are times when I'm coming home from a performance and I think, oh, I could just stop at the grocery store and pick up a couple of quick things. But instead I come home and drop my harp off and then go back. And um, also if I'm traveling and I stop at a hotel overnight with my harp, then I go ahead and take my harp in uh, just to keep it in a comfortable condition and I do not leave it in the car overnight. Now, anytime you move a harp by vehicle, you want to keep three things in mind. First of all, you want to be aware of where your levers or your uh, disc mechanism are, uh, so that way you can make sure that those are face up and not going to become damaged in any way. Uh, second of all, you want to be um, careful with the way that you put the harp in and out of the car, as that's the most likely time for the harp to be uh, scraped or damaged in some way. And then finally, you want to make sure that once the harp is in the car, it's in a very secure position and it won't slide around at all while you're driving. So obviously this harp is uh, quite small, uh, just uh, 30 inches or 76 centimeters, and it only weighs about nine pounds or four kilograms. Um, the levers are on the left side. They're always on the left side when uh, the harp is resting on your shoulder in the playing position. So I'm going to make sure that those uh, remain face up and then to put it in the car is quite simple because it's so light so I can just lift the entire harp. I don't have to slide it in any way. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to lower it down into the trunk like this. Now I'm going to add a couple of pillows to wedge it in place and make sure that it doesn't move uh, in route. And obviously you could use all kinds of different things to, um, to wedge the harp in, pillows or blankets or cushions. Um, with a harp this small also you can fit it in all different sizes of vehicles. Uh, you could easily put it in the back seat of a car or the floor of a back seat. You could even sit in the back seat and hold it. I think the biggest concern in moving a harp this small is just to make sure that it's not going to be moving around uh, while you're driving, that it's really secure. And then once you arrive, you can just uh, move the pillows to the side and pull out the harp, which is quite simple. And even with a lever harp a bit bigger than this, you can use a similar method to move it. Essentially, if the height of your harp is less than the width of a car, you have a lot of options for moving because then frequently you can fit it in a trunk like this or across a back seat or the floor of a back seat uh, fairly easily. So this harp is about 65 inches tall or 166 centimeters. So obviously it is taller than the width of the car, which means we'll need a different approach uh, for putting this harp into a car. And I'm going to use what's called a side load. This is a quite a common way to put a harp in a car. And for that, you need a uh, nice flat space uh, for the harp in the car. So here in this minivan, I have all of the seats folded down, um, but you can do a similar thing in many cars, um, even in a four-door car, a lot of times you can fold down the back seats and then uh, enter through the trunk to make a nice uh, flat space for the harp. And once you have a flat space big enough for the harp, 
The next thing you'll want to do is um, make sure that anything that could scrape the wood or damage the harp in any way is covered up. So you can see I have a rug here and then a blanket there. Uh, you can use all sorts of soft things just to make sure that it's a, uh, a nice soft bed for the harp. Uh, the only uh, real cause for concern here is this metal latch. Um, you could put a, you know, a yet another rug or something on top of that. Uh, since I move harps in this car so frequently, I'm <laughs> very adept at avoiding that particular latch. And then um, this harp weighs about uh, 38 pounds or 17 kilograms, which means that I'm still easily able to lift it. And that's an advantage in uh, putting the harp in the car. Now the levers are on the left side, so they are going to be face up. I have considered that. And then all I'm going to do is lift the harp up, oops, and then uh, tilt it to the side. And here I'm kind of balancing it on my leg. And then I can just walk forward and uh, slide the entire thing into the car, lifting up like so, and um, moving it well into the car so that the trunk can close easily. And of course, um, there's a lot of different ways you could do this. If you have a second person, you can each stand on either side of the harp, or you can have a person in the car ready to um, grab the top of the harp as you tilt it in. Um, but the goal is just to have it lying uh, securely on its side like this with the levers face up. And then at this point, you can wedge it in however you'd like using pillows cushions, etc., to make sure that it's really in a, a good spot. But generally with heavier harps, they're not inclined to slide too much, so it's a little bit less of a concern than with a tiny harp, but still something to think about, of course. Now to remove the harp, I'm just going to uh, lift it up a bit and then pull it towards me. And once a good portion of the harp is out, I will uh, balance it on my leg a bit and change my grip so that I can just lift it up, keeping an eye on the top of the harp there to make sure it doesn't bump the top of the car. And there it is. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind, uh, just small things. One is that I have a rug down here on my garage floor <laughs> that the harp is currently resting on. And I find that um, when I'm moving a harp like this that doesn't have a base cover, that's quite useful to have a spare rug for that because you never know when you're gonna end up in a parking lot with a bit of a puddle or something like that. And then also, this uh, side load method that I showed is a really common way to move a harp, but it's certainly not the only way to move a harp of this size. Um, and I've seen some families come up with really innovative solutions, uh, especially families that maybe have quite a few children and quite a few uh, items to move. There's a lot of different ways that you can securely and um, safely fit a harp into a car. Here we have a full-size pedal harp. This is uh, 73 inches or 185 centimeters tall and it weighs about 81 pounds or 37 kilograms. Now obviously with a harp this size, uh, most harpists have a large car. I think that an SUV, a station wagon, or a minivan like this one are the most common for transport transporting a large harp. And um, there are a couple of different methods for uh, putting this kind of harp in and out of a car. Uh, the first is uh, very similar to the method I just showed, the side load with the troubadour, uh, with just a few small uh, modifications. So, um, as before, I have the nice flat bed for the harp with all of the seats folded down except for the driver's seat and the front passenger seat. And again, I have some rugs and blankets just to cover up anything uh, that might scratch the harp. Um, and many people who use this uh, method for a pedal harp actually have some sort of mattress, like a foam mattress or an air mattress that they put in to make a really nice uh, soft cushion for the harp, and I think that's a great approach. Now, um, when putting the harp in, really the largest difference is that uh, this harp is so heavy that I, like many others, cannot lift it. So instead, I just have to tip it in. And if you have two people, um, using two people for this approach can be great because then you can have one person on this side tipping from over here and uh, one person on this side tipping from over here. Many people do that when side loading a pedal harp. Um, for myself, when I uh, turned 16, <laughs> I was really determined to both uh, get my driver's license so that I could drive myself and learn to move my harp by myself so that I didn't have to go anywhere uh, with my parents. <laughs> I really wanted to be quite independent. So I learned to uh, side load a harp by myself at that point. And um, the first thing you want to think about is the distance of the harp from the car. So if the harp is uh, too close to the car this way, 
then it will hit the top of the car when you try to tip it in. And if the harp is too far back this way, uh, then uh, it's really difficult to um, tip it in and have good leverage. So you want it to um, be a little ways out from the car so that about midway up the harp is what's going to uh, first come in contact with the car as you load it. And then since it's just me, I'm gonna kind of wrap around the harp entirely. I'm also really gonna use my right knee here underneath the harp um, as a guide and as a hold for the harp. And then I'll start to tip it this way, keeping that knee well under there. And then I'll just very gently lower it down the harp, as you can imagine, uh, does have the tendency, if you don't have a good grip, to just sort of flop down and you want to avoid that. And then once it's tipped like this, I'm going to come around to grab the base of the harp and I will boost it up and then slide the entire thing into the car like so. And so there we have uh, side loaded a uh, pedal harp. Now I'm going to unload the harp, so I'll just reach in. I'll grab the base and bring the harp towards me and then about halfway through I'll set the harp down. Uh, if you set the base of the harp down too soon then the top of the harp will hit the top of the car as you bring it out and if you set the base down uh, too far out it's really hard to get enough leverage to stand the harp up <laughs> which is what I'm about to do and since it's just me I'm really uh, reaching across the harp but if you had two people I could take this side and another person could take the column side. But here we go, I'll go ahead and uh, stand the harp bump. And there it is. Now for the final approach, I am going to column load the pedal harp. Uh, this is a little bit different than anything that I've done um, so far today. In a uh, column load, what you do is you turn the harp, and so rather than laying it on its side, you put it in on the column and then slide it in, uh, kind of like a giant shark fin. <laughs> and you do need a couple of uh, specific things in your car in order to be able to do this. Um, one, the harp uh, width of the car needs to um, fit within the uh, height of the car this way for this to work. And then secondly, you can see that I've reconfigured the car. So rather than having the entire back of it be a flat bed, now I have the uh, second row of chairs back to their seated position. Um, and so those two captain's chairs actually play a big role in the column load because they hold the harp in this uh, vertical position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, turn the harp uh, this way so that the column is directly facing the car. And then I'll go ahead and uh, make sure it's a good distance from the car. And I'll use my foot to wedge the base of the harp so it doesn't slide around and then I'll just tip it in like so. Then I'll come back to the base and boost this up and slide it on in between the two chairs. And then at this point, I usually take some uh, small pillows and wedge it there between the chairs just to make sure that it's not going to tip at all uh, while I drive. And I really like the column load personally. This is how I move my harp almost all of the time. Uh, in particular, I like it because then you can fit uh, a couple of passengers back there. I mean, they do have a, a harp between them. It's slightly odd, but you can still fit uh, many more passengers this way when moving a harp. Now I've gone ahead and uh, wedged a couple of pillows in there to keep the harp from rocking back and forth side to side. I should also mention that because this is the way I usually move my harp, I have a whole uh, system of foam uh, with rugs on top of it underneath the harp all along the column there up to the center of the car. And then um, when I'm taking my harp places, obviously I don't just have my harp, I also have a few other things. So I thought I'd show how I load those. So here is my cart, which I usually just slide along the side of the harp there. And then I uh, generally take a music stand. Many places have music stands, but sometimes <laughs> they do not. And then um, I take my uh, collapsible bench and I just put those on this side. And then I'm all set. So now I'm going to unload the harp and I've uh, removed the small pillows that were wedging it. And uh, here we go. I'm hopeful that I'm gonna be able to do this in one take as the mosquitoes are getting quite bad out here. But as with uh, all the other methods, I'm just gonna reverse what I did. So I'll start to pull the base of the harp toward me and then I'll boost it up and over the back of the car. And then once the top is in there, I'm gonna set it down like so. Keeping a hand on it, I'll come around and bring the whole thing upright. 
So there we have uh, unloaded the column loaded herb. As always, I hope that you've found this video useful and it's given you some uh, great ideas for loading and unloading a harp in a car. Uh, one thing that I've tried to emphasize is that there are a variety of approaches to this. And so really, I think uh, moving a harp well is about finding what works best for you. Uh, some people really don't like to move a harp by themselves. They prefer to always have a second person with them. And of course, that can be a great approach. Uh, some people uh, find that if they're doing, you know, a side load for a pedal harp, for example, uh, they like to have some sort of board or something to um, use to tip the harp in and out of the car. And if that works well for you, that's another great approach. So really, I think uh, being comfortable with moving a harp in a car is very much about figuring out what works best for you and uh, best for your harp. Good luck to you.